What's up everybody, today we're going to create this animated instant mask that will make your b-roll videos and talking head videos more dynamic and eye-catching so that they can grab your viewers attention better. So let's start with the talking head instant mask first because it will teach you the foundations of this mask effect and animation itself, then we can apply it to the b-roll footage. First things first, place your clip on the timeline and move to the fusion page. Here we're going to grab the rectangle node to create a rectangle mask over our video. Next, in the inspector, increase the width and height to the maximum. Let me switch to one viewer. Press and hold Ctrl or Command on the keyboard and scroll down on your mouse wheel to zoom out. Next, I'm going to place the playhead at the beginning and set keyframes for width, height, and corner radius. Then I'm going to move forward, let's say at frame 40, decrease the width 2.5 and the height 2.8 and the corner radius Let's set it at 0.2. And there you have your inset mask. Now let's move on to the fun part, the animation. For that, we're gonna need a transform node. Keep your playhead at frame 40 and set a keyframe for center and size. Next, place your playhead at frame 70 and let's move the inset mask. Let's place it somewhere around here. Let's decrease it a little bit. Okay, and move it just a little more to the right. Perfect. Let's play this back. All right, now let's fine tune the keyframes. Close the inspector and open the spline. Let's organize our nodes a little bit. Also, if you want them to snap to the grid like mine, Right click on the grid, go to arrange tools to grid. Let's bring the playhead at the beginning, click on the rectangle node and let's enable width first. Control or command F to bring them into view, box select everything and press S on your keyboard to smooth them out. Now let's grab the top handle, and drag it out somewhere around here. We'll actually add frame 40. Now let's play this back quickly. All right, next, the height, Control or Command F, box select, S on the keyboard. Let's try to match the curve of the width a little bit, but still reach frame 40. Let's play this back. Okay, at frame 40, it's a bit too much. Let me drag it back to frame 25. I'm gonna do the same for the width. much better. Now the corner radius. For this, I'm going to drag the lower handle somewhere around frame 35. Perfect. Nice and smooth. Now move on to the transform node. First, I'm going to change the displacement. So let's disable size for now. Box select S and I'm going to grab the top handle bring it over to let's say frame 45 let's play it back actually let's change this so place it at frame 60 grab the lower handle let's drag it to somewhere between frame 60 and 65. much better. Disable displacement, enable size. Again, box select an S on the keyboard. And now I'm going to grab the top keyframe, press and hold shift on the keyboard and left click on the square of the keyframe. And let's drag it over in between frame 55 and 60, somewhere around here. Next, grab the handle and drag it over until you reach frame 70 and drag it down just a little bit. Now let's play this back. Now let's apply the same techniques to the B-roll footage. 
bring your footage onto the timeline, place it however you want. And in my case, I'm going to trim them to match the shortest clip I have. Next, select all three, right click and select new fusion clip. Place the playhead at the beginning and let's move to fusion. Next, let's rearrange these nodes. Now, what's important to remember when working with multiple nodes and multiple merge nodes is to place them in the correct order and link them in the correct order. As you can see, the merge nodes have three inputs and one output. The output, logically, you link it to the next node. The green input is for foreground. So everything that you want to be on top of your bottom node goes into the foreground. The blue input is the mask effect. So anything like a rectangle mask, polygon mask goes into this node or other type of effects. And the last one, the yellow one, is the background. This does not refer to the background node. It refers to any element or any node that goes beneath the foreground. So in our case, media one links to the background node of merge one and merge one links to the background node of media out one. And we have our first clip. If you remember, this was the bottom clip. Next, media two to background two and output to foreground. And now we have our second clip. And for the third media in node, I'm going to just bring in another merge node and connect it the same way. Now let's add our masks. We need only two rectangle masks for media two and media three. And in order to move the footage and the mask at the same time, we need two merge nodes. For now, let's disconnect merge three so we can work only with the second clip. Click on the rectangle, go to the inspector, type in 0.2 or the corner radius. Let's adjust our mask using the center X axis and Y axis. Also, let's increase the height and width a little bit. Perfect. Now with the transform node, we're going to move and resize our footage. Let's zoom out with control or command and scroll down. Also, let's adjust the screen so we have more space to work with. Now let's align the clip where we want it to be. OK, let me increase the size just a little bit. Now move the playhead at frame 40. Click on rectangle one and set a keyframe for center, width and height. Move to frame 20, decrease the width, but not completely and move the center x-axis to the left somewhere around here. Now move the playhead at frame zero, set a keyframe for width to maintain the value and move the center x-axis out of the frame. Now if we play it back, perfect. Now the next step is to sync the third clip with the second one. So let's reconnect merge three, output to foreground, select rectangle two, input the corner radius, point two, take the transform node, and let's move our footage. I want it to be somewhere around here. And our first animation ended at frame 40. So our second animation will start from frame 40. But first we need to set the endpoints of the animation. So in this case, I'm just gonna go to frame 70. So select rectangle two and set keyframes for center, width and height, just like the other one. Now let's move to frame 55. And for this one, I wanna decrease the height. Oh. somewhere around here and move the center Y axis down. Now let's move to frame 40, set a keyframe for height to keep the value like before and move it out of the frame. Now let's play back both animations. Good, now let's fix the overlapping. So the overlapping happens at frame 70. So let's go back a few frames frame 67, select rectangle one and set keyframes for center and height. Move forward to frame 70, decrease the height and move the Y axis up. Now, if we scrub the footage, we see that they do not overlap, but my mask is cutting part of the camera. To fix this, take your transform one node, move your playhead back to frame 67, set a keyframe for center. Now back to frame 70, move the footage up a little bit, go back to rectangle one, lower the mask and increase the height. Now let's play this back. 
Now that the overlapping is fixed, let's start refining the keyframes. Close the inspector and open up the spline. Press and hold the scroll wheel on your mouse to move your nodes into frame. Select rectangle one and let's edit the keyframes. Control or command F to bring your keyframes into frame. Let's disable height and width for now and leave only displacement. Box select the first keyframes. Press S on the keyboard to smooth them out. Now box select the last two. S on the keyboard. Let's check it out. Much better. Now let's disable displacement and enable width since we have only keyframes at the beginning. Box select these two, press S on the keyboard and let's bring the lower handle up just a little bit. Now let's play this back. Much better. Disable width, enable height. We have only keyframes at the end. Box select and press S to smooth them out. Next, enable transform one. Here we only have displacement, control or command F. Box select, for this we're just gonna leave it on smooth, so press S on the keyboard and move on to rectangle two, displacement. Let's completely disable transform one, control or command F again, box select all three, S on the keyboard. Now let's enable height and width and see where we at. All right, disable displacement and width, box select the height, press S on the keyboard, and let's check it out. So it seems that when we smooth out the keyframes, the overlap came back. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to fix this. Move the playhead right at the beginning of the overlap, which is frame 66 in this case. Select rectangle 2, select the height, or make sure the height is active. Select the last keyframe from the height animation and press and hold shift on the keyboard. Left click on the keyframe and move it to the right. Let's move it around frame 74. Now if we scrub back overlap is gone. Let's also play it back to see the full animation. Good, no more overlap and the animation is smooth. And this is how you create an animated inset mask in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Now, if you want to learn more about motion graphics and Fusion or about DaVinci Resolve in general, drop a comment and let me know what you want to learn and I'll do my best to help you out. And as a first step for that, check out this video where I teach you how to create animated backgrounds in Fusion. And until next time, take care.